Jeff's Hockey Show. I'm the Jeff. That's too sweet. Anyway, 2024 NHL entry draft. A lot happened today in Las Vegas at the Sphere. It, the Sphere is it, on visually it looks like something else, but I've actually seen it in person. It looks like something else. Not not a bad something else. It looks like something else. Anyway. Right off the block, here's a spoiler alert, no big trades, other than picks. That was about it. Big spoiler, outside one and two, it was pretty unpredictable. I, I say that because one and two were as expected, but after that, you went completely off the board. And we'll talk more about it, but either way, it's a very interesting draft. So let's talk about it. So would you believe over 14,000 people packed this thing to see this draft? And this is the outside. This is on the inside. Oh my goodness. But anyway, all aesthetics aside, a lot of the mock drafts leading up to this draft had Macklin Celebrini going first, obviously. Artem Lishanov going second, obviously. And Anton Saleyov going third. And as I said, after picks one and two, you went completely off the map. And for my own personal greedy wants, I was really hoping Teach again was going to make it to pick number eight. But as I do with these videos, I'm only going to talk about the top five. And of picks of note and things that I would find interesting. So I, I guarantee you I will be talking about Teach again and Seattle. Because, well, we always talk about Seattle. But... Let's, let's get over the obvious here. Macklin Celebrini going to the Sharks. This was the call all year long, as far as I was concerned anyway. The consensus number one pick all year. So, yeah, when you come in with the hype and you're 10 minutes away from SAP Center, that helps out a lot. He's the fourth collegiate player chosen at number one and the first since 2021 when Owen Power was drafted number one. He's also the second player from Boston University to be drafted at number one, first being Rick DiPietro in 2000, and we all know how Glassjaw turned out, right? Right. He's also the first Hobie Baker player, Hobie Baker award winner, sorry, to be drafted first overall. So he's going to bring in some firsts with him, and he's also the first time the Sharks selected first overall. I mean, 91 they could have done it, but they didn't. But either way... I don't expect him to make the difference immediately. And I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he has to decide if he's going back to, to college or if he's going to just jump right into the NHL. But either way, this could be the shot in the arm the Sharks need to get better. It's just a matter of how long it's going to take, right? Right. And the pick was announced by Joe Thornton. And I mean, I hope that beard never changes because that is an amazing beard. Chicago at number two. And had... Connor Bedard announced Anton Levshunov as their next stud on defense. And I mean, he's called the total package for a reason. I mean, 6'2", 205. And he's only going to get stronger, right? Little fact. <laughs> Despite being drafted out of Michigan State, and the last time they drafted 1-2 collegiately was 2021 when it was Power Paneers. He was, he was playing at Michigan State. He's the highest Belarusian-born player drafted at number two. The original highest pick was number nine. Now he's number two. This could be a good move in the right direction for the Blackhawks as far as defense is concerned because, let's face facts, they really need to improve that blue line and with, with Bedard and with all the help I'm sure they're going to bring in to help the offense. It could be a scary, scary machine on defense. The Ducks had picked number three and selected Beckett Sneket. And I mean <laughs> look up his reaction to getting drafted. Like that's just his immediate reaction. That's not counting, you know, if you're a good lip reader. I mean a lot of the experts had him going outside the top ten. So for him to make the big three, I mean, I honestly thought it was gonna be Iserman making the big three, but no. <laughs> No, I really didn't think that was going to be that pick at all. But who knows? I mean, give it a year or two. He could be a slow developer, but he could be a good developer for the Ducks. 
time will tell on this one. Columbus selected Caden Lindstrom at number four. And I think this was the pick they needed to make. I mean, to have a good, solid center down center punch with Adam Fantilli, you know, the one-two, it could be good. I mean, depending on what Columbus does with line A, and if Goudreau ever decides to catch fire with Columbus, I mean, we've been waiting for that, for that to happen for a while now. But if they play the cards right with Lindstrom, he could actually make make him, make make the team make some moves. But again, none of those time will tell kind of things. The Montreal Canadiens decided to go Russian for a change and selected Ivan Demidov with the number five pick, and even had Celine Dion announce the pick. Ooh. ooh. Now Demidov's still under contract with the SKA in Saint Petersburg in the KHL for the, up until the 25-26 season, but. It's not uncommon that he could see a release, you know, just so he could pursue the NHL. But who knows? I mean, with a couple of years left on that deal, the Canadians could be patient to wait and let him develop his, his scoring ability. Because if he's the scorer they say he is, let him let him grow. Let him grow. Let him become a scorer first, then let him loose. But that's the top five. Now let's talk about some of the interesting picks. Like I was saying, I was waiting for Tej Ginla to make it to number eight, but Utah had other ideas and took him at number six. I honestly thought Montreal was going to take him, to be perfectly honest. But yeah, there you go. The first pick in Utah's NHL history, because you got to remember, Utah is not a relocation of the now defunct. We can confirm that now. Arizona Coyotes it is a brand new team. They just happened to buy the university. That they bought the Arizona Coyotes hockey properties that's it everything else stayed so your first pick in utah is tj gimla didn't go to seattle speaking of your seattle kraken though berkeley catton was drafted at number eight and uh, here comes the scoring i mean finishing fourth in the whl with 116 points and yeah i know it's the whl can it translate to the hl well let's find out when he makes the team right him veneers right it could be scary good, especially if Wright's given the chance to develop under Bilesma. But we'll see on that one. And finally, the pick that was supposed to go to number three, that being Anton Slaev, dropped all the way down to number 10. But, you know, for what everybody else passed over, this could be New Jersey's gain. And that's what New Jersey needs, is their own defenseman they can groom and develop. And hopefully Slaev can transition over to the NHL game really well, really quick, and be a good defenseman like he's supposed to be, because a lot of the reports are just positive on this guy, so if they are right, there are seven GMs who look like complete boneheads for not picking this guy, but let's see what happens. Defensemen, they always take time to develop, right? So, unless they come right into the NHL and have their development done, but that's neither here nor there. Just look at Hedman. But the long and short of it, that was, you know, about a couple, about a couple picks that I thought were interesting, worth talking about. I mean, time will tell how the twenty four class develops into what the twenty three class, the twenty two or twenty one class isn't. Because I mean, after one two, it, it it was like I said, it was it was open season, and it proved just that. So, let's see which teams benefit from this draft and which teams don't. Either way, I think, you know, Celebrini is going to be as good as he's hyped up to be. As far as him being number one pick, it's not a bad number one pick at all. I mean, it was the only number one pick you were ever going to have. So you shouldn't be horribly surprised. All in all, though, I think it was a good draft. Despite the fact that there was no real major trades. But day two is another day, and we usually see some really good things on day two. So here's hoping. It's another one of them Trezaki shows. I want to thank you for tuning in. Don't think I don't appreciate the gesture, especially if you've tuned in to this point. And if you have tuned in to this point, well, hey, that's awesome. You know, definitely feel free to leave me a thumbs up just to say, hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm checking out your stuff. Hey, even just to say, hey, I'm all good with that. Or if you want to, that red button that says subscribe all over it. Yeah, you know what you know what you, you know what you should do. I mean, to everybody who has hit that button lately, thank you very much. I do appreciate it a whole bunch, a whole bunch. So let's keep this train going. We're going to five, and we're so close to halfway. 
and moving forward I only got one more video I want to do this month and then I have to commit myself to doing more in July but like I said with the off season with free agency coming up expect me to have some reactions to some signings um, but yeah other than that I'm playing catch up still so either way in the meantime in between time be looking for more videos from Trev later